with Democratic Congressman Roger Krishnamoorthy of Illinois. He's a member of the Intelligence Committee as well as the Oversight Committee. Um, sir, first, can you react to this story about Australia, that the president uh, asked Australia to get involved in this investigation into the origins of the Russia probe? I mean, what what is your expectation for what he was soliciting? Well, first of all, this investigation uh, seems misplaced in the in, at the start, but the fact that basically Bill Barr would somehow um, have the president be such a uh, uh, important part of this investigation, which appears to be a self-serving one, and then calling a foreign leader to assist um, is very concerning. Um, I think that Bill Barr initially asked uh, Mr. Durham, uh, a U.S. attorney, to lead this investigation. And now it appears that the president has uh, commandeered it and he's calling foreign leaders to help. And who knows what he's using as leverage in the process. And, you know, recently, I think we all watched as the president had a meeting with the Australian prime minister. And right. I mean, just to put into context, um, Australia is an important partner. Australia clearly for the U.S. Australia clearly wanted to stay on the right Correct. side of the U.S., um, that Correct. was very clear from this meeting that we saw part of it on camera. So with that expectation, what kind of position do you worry that puts Australia in? It's, a, it's, it's not as bad as Ukraine, but it, it's on another vulnerable position. Obviously, the Australians do rely on the U.S. Uh, uh, you know, as part of our Five Eyes arrangement with them and others um, to basically have a collective defense and share intelligence with each other. But um, I just going back to what you talked about before with Bill Barr and President Trump, again, it's yet another example of the Justice Department basically losing all of its independence in this administration, where basically Bill Barr, you know, looks to the president for, uh, you know, basically uh, leadership as to how the Justice Department should be doing its job. We also just confirmed CNN did that uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was on this phone call July 25th between right. uh, President Trump and the Ukrainian president. What do you think of that? What's your reaction? Well, the fact that, you know, Mike Pompeo would be part of this call where essentially the president is asking a foreign leader to interfere in our 2020 elections. And, um, uh, I, you know, he doesn't say anything about it. He doesn't um, do anything about it. He doesn't interject himself. Uh, or he doesn't bring it to anyone's attention in Congress is problematic. I think that we'll have to ask him more questions. Apparently, one of his aides was also part of this call, Mr. Breckbull, according to the complaint. But one thing I should point out, Brianna, in my questioning of acting DNI McGuire last week, he said that more than a dozen people were on the phone call. And so we're going to have to talk to them as well. Your committees uh, have, have just subpoenaed not Rudy Giuliani, but documents from Rudy Giuliani. Um, what happens if he doesn't comply with this? Well, uh, we're going to have to see uh, what happens. I think probably we're going to have to hold him uh, in contempt and look to remedies to compel production of these documents. But the reason why he's the object of the subpoena is that he's all over uh, the transcript uh, of the phone call on July 25th of this year, um, as well as in the complaint. Um, the question is, you know, is he conducting our foreign policy? Uh, despite the fact that he's the president's personal attorney? Um, is he talking about withholding aid to the Ukraine uh, that was promised to them? And, and is he also actively seeking their interference in the 2020 elections? All of these things are questions that we need answers to. Uh, your committees could subpoena actually him uh, to come in and testify. Are you interested in that? Or are you worried that it would just turn into a circus akin to what we saw with Corey Lewandowski? <laughs> Rudy Giuliani in a circus, I don't know what you're talking about, Brianna, but um, I, I, look, I think that first we got to get the documents. We have to examine the documents and probably talk to other people who are familiar with them. Um, I suspect uh, that uh, Chairman Schiff would probably call him in uh, at some point, but you know, the chairman's going to have to make that decision and will be very supportive. So you expect you will call him in at some point? I, I suspect that he would be a witness at some point. Um, I'm not sure whether it would be an open or a closed hearing, but uh, I think that we would probably want to examine the documents and talk to other people before uh, calling Giuliani in. If you had him closed 
in a closed hearing, you would run into criticism that you're not doing this in a transparent way. If you have them in an open hearing, you run into the possibility that it does turn right. into uh, a lot of drama. So how do you weigh right. those things? Um, I think all things being equal, I personally, I'm just speaking for myself, uh, would like to have maximum transparency uh, because there's so much public interest in what's going on now. And I think that we want the American people to know exactly how the proceedings are being conducted and to hear from themselves, hear for themselves from the witnesses. All right, Congressman, thank you so much. Congressman Roger Krishnamurthy with you, us. Thank you, Brianna. Stay with us.